Okay, so I think we can start. So the webinar starts right now. So hello, everybody. This is Lubos Pirkel from CFD Support. Uh, welcome to the webinar about fun design and simulation workflow by CF Turbo and TCFD. In today's webinar, we would like to show you a way how to design a centrifugal fan from a scratch in CF Turbo and then how to simulate it and evaluate it in TCFD. I hope everything works well. We are running live, so in case of any technical problems, feel free to contact us and we will gladly answer all your questions and comments. The webinar is being recorded and its recording will be made publicly available. Uh, at the end of this webinar, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions. You can ask them anytime during the webinar and uh, at the end uh, we will we will come to the to the Q&A. We will answer some of your questions and some of them will be answered uh, later uh, via email. So I think all is set. So it's time to, to get to the action. So let's move. So yeah, so to, to avoid any misunderstanding, right in the beginning, I would like to stress out that this is a two-way webinar of two independent companies. We have Synergy products and we would like to show you how well they work together. So both of them are standalone tools, independent on the other. I guess you know, but still, uh, CF Turbo is a German company uh, that produces a turbo machinery design tool called CF Turbo, the same name. And CFD Support is Czech company that produces uh, an automated CFD tool called TCFD. Uh, so, yeah, so this is the, the brand info. Uh, please let me introduce the webinar speakers. So this is me. My name is Lubos Pirkel. I am co-founder of CFD Support and my current job is telling the world about CFD Support. I am here in our Prague office with my colleague, uh, Radek Matsa. Uh, hello, Radek. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, Lubos from the office next door and hello to everyone from Prague. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything seems to be seems to be ready on your side. Uh, I will only note that Radek is our head engineer and senior developer here at CFD Support. And also together on the line, there is Oliver Felde in Dresden. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Lubers, and hello, Radek. Yeah, hi. So we all seem to be ready for the webinar. I will only note that uh, Oliver is senior manager CAE at CF Turbo and he will be speaking about uh, CFD, uh, CF Turbo software today. Um, here is the, the webinar agenda. So the webinar is going to take about one hour. There will be a few sections in the webinar after this introduction section. Uh, Oliver will briefly introduce CF Turbo and he will show us how to design a completely new centrifugal fan for, from a scratch in, in it, in CF Turbo. Uh, after that, uh, Radek will briefly introduce TCFD and uh, he will also show us how to, how to set up the simulation and run the simulation and perhaps, I guess, evaluate the results in it. And finally, uh, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions anytime during the webinar. Some questions will be answered right in the webinar. The rest will be answered later via email. So you can be sure that all the all the questions will be answered in the end. Uh, okay, so I think we can really start. So uh, Oliver, uh, will you tell us about CF Turbo now? Yes, I will. Thank you, Lubos. Well, CF Turbo is a German company that produces that turbo machinery design uh, package, which we call a conceptual design package because it's uh, based on latest design theory for the turbo machinery design. And what you can do with that uh, tool is you can uh, almost design any of, of the turbo machinery um, machines that are out there. Right now we have more than 200 active clients globally and the modules I just talked sh shortly about are those for pumps, both centrifugal as well as actual. We have fans and blowers, we have compressors and turbines and of course we have the complementary 
components for those machines, which are status and diffusers, and of course, volutes. Uh, we serve those industries that are given here. Amongst them, there are aerospace, automotive, consumer products, uh, and so on and so on. And also the semiconductor industry, because that might be interesting for the today's webinar. There are a lot of fans uh, that are used in that uh, industry sector. Okay, so I think it's maybe it's time to to switch to hand over the presentation to you, Oliver. So I'll do that right now. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Okay. What you see here is is the the desktop, if you like, of CF Turbo. If you start a design from the scratch, you have to choose uh, from those soft buttons in order to uh, decide which kind of uh, machine you want to design. So today's webinar content is the design of a centrifugal fan. That's why I'm pressing the, the fan or ventilator uh, button. And the very, the, the very first uh, entry or content you have to type in is the design point, because that is the point which we use for the conceptual design. And it is also the point uh, which we think of where the machine should run in most of the time and which we think of should where it should have the best efficiency. So uh, probably a word before I go deeper into the design, we have done this seminar or that webinar, I think one and a half year ago. That's why this time I would like to fasten a bit, go through the first design steps a bit faster and want to uh, focus on some uh, additional features which haven't been uh, introduced so far. And if it was a bit too fast, so please check uh, at YouTube our uh, earlier webinar. Okay, so the de design point is 38,000 cubic meter per hour. Uh, the um, uh, pressure difference is 26400 Pascal, and it should run on 2,900 RPMs. Uh, also, what you have to define is what kind of fluid you want to uh, transport with the machine, because uh, from that some um, properties are used in design process. Here, as we consider the flow being uh, incompressible, we just use the density. But if it comes to uh, compressors or turbines, of course, real gas models and stuff like that are used to calculate the correct uh, behavior and to calculate, uh, the calculate the correct thermodynamic uh, values in, in certain uh, sections. So we have a list of, of some predefined uh, um, fluids. So for instance, uh, high temperature or higher temperature air, which has a, a different uh, density than the 20 centigrade air. And saying that, I'm, I'm done with the global setup. You see here also there are some inlet conditions uh, given or to be defined. They are not used in the design process, but they are used later on if it comes to the CFD validation by, for instance, TCFD. Okay. Once that is defined, uh, I'm asked to, to add a new component. A component in the project is always either an impeller, a volute, or a stator. And the stator can be uh, veinless or can have blades. I'm going to start with the impeller because that's the central component of our project. And as you can see in the uh, uh, upper left hand corner, there are a couple of design steps you have to run through and you have to go through all of them step by step. But because the the whole geometry is fully parameterized, you can go back at any time, can change one parameter like the impeller diameter, can hit the OK button and you get an update of the 3D geometry immediately. Okay, the first design step is the definition of the main dimensions. 
the main dimensions are just inlet diameters, outlet uh, diameter and outlet width. They can be typed in directly by the users or they can be calculated by, by uh, CF Turbo. And when it comes to the calculation, uh, some parameters are taken into account as well as the solution of some uh, 1D balance equations like continuity equation or Euler's equation of turbo machinery. So here, for instance, we use the diameter coefficient that comes from the Cordier diagram in order to make uh, proposals for the impeller diameter. So if I, for instance, uh, go to the automatic mode, which means at any time after a parameter change, the main dimensions are newly calculated. Then you see on the right hand side immediately how with a change of the diameter coefficient, the, uh, the impeller do, uh, dimension will be changed. Okay, but I'm going to, to take off that uh, checkbox. And because I, I know what kind of shaft diameter I want to have, which is 100 millimeter, I type in that directly. And also I'm going to get rid of that decimal places. Okay, so once that is, uh, I'm finished with that initial design, I can hit uh, the OK button. And in our meridional view, we, we can see that uh, very strange um, uh, geometric uh, shape. And that's given because we just have defined inlet diameters, the impeller diameter and the outlet width, but not yet the uh, shape of hop and shroud. And this is going to be done in the next design step, which is uh, the meridional contour. And that's why I go to that design step. Initially for that centrifugal fan, we have a plain hop and a shroud that is made of a, a, a arc and a straight line. I want to change that shape at the hop to Bezier curve. And I do that by just clicking on uh, uh, opening that context menu. Um, and also what I want to do, I want to introduce a certain inlet uh, line here at the shroud because I want to have uh, a short piece of um, meridional contour which has a, a constant shroud radius. And again, to this end, I right click on, on the curve and I'm going to add an inlet curve. That's, that's funny. Okay. And here we are. Again, if I right click on some uh, controls, I can, I have an access to, uh, to some extra edit uh, boxes where I can directly set uh, parameters. And I'm going to do that here for that inlet area. Okay, something like that. And I can do that, but also, uh, also by drag and drop. And uh, on the right hand side, you see immediately information being displayed that can be calculated of the inputs that have been done so far. <clears throat> okay, 250. Okay, and then I'm fine with that initial design. Maybe I have the, the leading edge not at a constant radius, but uh, almost perpendicular to to hop and trow and, and that's why I'm going to change that like that. Okay, if I click OK, I see something in in our uh, 3D um, display, and that's just the uh, uh, yeah the meridional contour which is rotated, and that forms that uh, solid here. The next step is to define First, the general shape of the blades, also the number of blades, and, uh, and then when that is done, the blade angles. Very often in fan design, um, circular 2D blades are used because um, manufacturers used to take metal 
sheets, um, bend them, and weld them together, and that's it. And that's why that is um, one of the shapes available, but there are, of course, others as well. So if you choose, for instance, freeform 3D, then from an aerodynamic point of view, you have most of the freedom to design uh, your, your impeller. But of course, you have to bear in mind how to uh, manufacture your design. That's why I'm going to leave it on circular 2D. Uh, when it comes to that uh, shape, then only uh, the hub span can be manipulated by just uh, giving him a leading and trailing edge uh, angle because the shape, the circular shape will uh, determine all the other uh, spans, which are here just two, but of course I can change it to uh, up to 11 spans if, if that is uh, necessary, but it's not necessary here because it's just a simple shape. Okay, once I'm happy with that, I can go directly within that design step to the next design step, but I also can click OK. Then I see in my meridional view the position of the leading edge and the next design step then is what we call mean line design step. Here the um, blade is designed with a zero thickness because that's going to be added in the next design step. Uh, also, what you see here is that there is nothing you can do here apart from uh, telling where is the leading edge position in a tangential direction. And that's why, uh, because the circular shape has already defined everything. So that's uh, sort of speaking uh, just for, for information here. But of course, if you change the blade shape to, for instance, freeform 2D or freeform 3D, then you have more uh, freedom to change your shape and, and the geometry within this design step. I directly go to the next design step, which is adding the um, thickness onto that mean surface, as we call it, and that can be done in uh, two ways, either linear by control points, and between the control points, the thickness is uh, distributed in a linear way, but it can also be freeform where we uh, again use Bezier curves and where we define the thickness distribution from leading edge to trailing edge. Also, if I again use uh, the context menu, I also have access to a built-in profile manager and in that profile manager, there are a couple of um, profiles predefined. So for instance, uh, some four digit NACA profiles, and one can take the thickness distribution from them and can use them in the blade profiles design step. But because uh, I think of a producer that, that uh, might use uh, metal sheets, I leave it to the linear mode where the thickness is constant uh, uh, from leading uh, yeah, from leading to training edge. That's why I'm going back to linear and leave it like it is. If I press OK and go back to 3D model, um, then what I can see is that, that I have sharp edges at leading and trailing edge and that also at the trailing edge uh, the blade is not completely within the meridional contour. And in order to make or sort that out, I'm going into the very last design step. And here one can define the shape of the leading and trailing edge. And one shape, for instance, is the elliptic one where one can uh, define a half axis ratio, uh, radius uh, ratio which is three by default here, and I'm going to change it to two. And one can also tell that at the trailing edge, the blade should be trimmed with the uh, impeller diameter. And I'm going to show what that means by just zoom into the blade. Okay, now it's untri not, not trimmed, and if I trim it, it's just trimmed on one side and projected at the other uh, side. And then one gets a very nice 3D model. And uh, 
by pressing OK, I'm, I'm ready with my initial design for the impeller. My second uh, component in that uh, webinar will be the volute, which I'm going to add at the outlet. And to this end, I open that menu at the outlet, add a new volute. That uh, volute should have a certain inlet diameter. Maybe 1,400 is a bit too big, so I'm, I'm going to change it to something like that. But the inlet uh, width should be bigger because I want to have a rectangular shape of the volute, and and uh, and to this end I need a, a a wider inlet. Also, what I want to do is uh, I want to have a certain actual uh, offset. That's why I'm going to the next uh, tab, change the offset to for instance 65 and that's it so i'm done with the um, um, with the setup and inlet of the volute the next design step is to choose from the built in uh, general cross section shapes and they can be very various so there we have everything apart from rectangular and it's trapezoidal it's round it can be round asymmetric you can use again bezier curves and line segment uh, curves that almost can um, define any kind of shape and it also can be radius based uh, and above that, it, it don't have to be symmetric. You can also have at the left hand side a rectangular shape and on the other side, for instance, a round shape. But again, I'm going to leave it to default because it's a centrifugal fan. And uh, therefore, I don't have to do anything more in this design step. Uh, when I enter the next design step, I enter probably the most important design step of, of the volutes. And in this design step, the cross section at each angle position is scaled either according to some own experience or on the basis of some built in rules like the standard rule um, defined by Flydar. And and here again one can uh, change parameters and then one gets uh, immediately a change of of the geometry but i i'm going to leave it to flyderos uh, default swirl exponent like one and if i now press ok i also have uh, an update of the 3d uh, geometry of the fan but this just uh, lacks of an outlet diffuser plus the um, the cut water and that's why I'm going to enter again um, and uh, I think I have uh, that was too big let me just con okay and and here I'm going to to enter a certain outlet diffuser which again should be rectangular just like the 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 volute cross section and it should have a height of 400 and a width of 300 and maybe the length of that diffuser can be a thousand and again i get a lot of informational values like the cone angle which is very small here which is good because uh, in order to avoid um flow separation okay and, and saying that i'm going to enter into the last in the very last design step uh, with for the volute and that's that's the um, uh, cut water and here i choose the simple mode i could also have different modes but the simple mode is the one that i'm going to apply for that rectangular shape uh, it, i can tell at which angle uh, that the cut water should be uh, located and I can also tell him what is the cut water height by that parameter and once I'm pressing OK I'm almost done with my initial design and because it's an initial design I uh, have to analyze that in order to um, yeah, make sure that my design goal is reached and that can be done 
by using a lot of uh, implemented interfaces. Those interfaces are meant to get very quickly in any into any uh, simulation environment in order to validate uh, the design. Okay, and today it's it's a joint seminar between TCFD and CF Turbo. That's why I'm going to choose TCFD, choose the the components I want to uh, consider in the design, and give him a name. So, for instance fan and also tell him where to uh, save the, the, uh, the expert. But it tells me that something is wrong and I have to sort out that, uh, um, well, errors if you like. And that's why I have to go back and have to um, go to the impeller again add some extra CFD extensions so they can be radial and can have a certain length. So for instance, 10 millimeter. And also I have to connect by, by kind of virtual geometry, the volute and uh, the impeller. And, and also what I want to do is I want to uh, introduce a fillet uh, radius uh, on hop and shroud uh, because if there is, is a seam or a welding seam, then there, there might be some, uh, some uh, fillet radius there. Okay, once I have done that, I can, well, there's a CFD set up for the volute as well, where I can add another extension if I like, and I can define the extension here. Okay, and once I have done that, I'm I should be able to to run the TCFD export, and it it looks very good because everything is green. I have given him a name. I have given him a destination. I could start the the export here. I even could start uh, firing up TCFD from CF Turbo, but that's <laughs> something I don't want to do because that's rad export. Uh, I just press OK here. And now a TCFD file is written with all the um, information necessary to run the simulation. And also all the STL data are created and exported, which are also necessary to, um, to set up the simulation run in TCFD. All right, so um, that probably takes a couple of more seconds. Uh, once that is ready, uh, uh, Radek could could start um, could start uh, with his presentation. But before that, I would like to take the chance just to um, to introduce another feature which probably hasn't been or which wasn't uh, introduced the last time, and that's the secondary flow path. Um, um, feature and to this end I'm going to add another stator at the inlet and that should be an actual stator with a certain length so for instance 800 millimeter uh, I have to define the the inlet and outlet geometry and also need a certain gap between two adjacent components. That's why I'm introducing this uh, actual offset here. And if I press OK, uh, then it looks in the meridional contour like that. And this is one of the features I want to show here. It's, uh, I can also, apart from the, uh, you know, fluid solid, I can also uh, define what we call the material solid. And I have to do that by activating the, the solids. And I can do the same in the impeller just by going through the second uh, tab. I'll leave everything as it is. I just want to show you quickly how it uh, would work. But the most important thing is the secondary flow path design. And that, that can be activated here on the third tab. 
And what you see here is, um, yeah, some kinds of uh, polylines with some control points, which one can move to certain positions and one can, by doing so, define the, the secondary flow path. Most important is certainly to, to define it here at the shroud side because there might be, or you probably want to have some sort of a ceiling in order to avoid uh, flow going back to the suction side. And again, there is a lot of uh, functionality in the uh, context menu. So I'm going to split the curve here and just uh, insert a new Bezier point. And yeah, by doing so, I'm, I, well, maybe here, that's something I should uh, split. Okay, and once I'm f finished, I can run uh, again on the project at model finishing because that is needed to uh, produce all the solids. And once that is ready, I'm almost at the end. So I can now show the material solids which were get generated. We just have two material solids, the inlet stator and the uh, impeller. And we also get some information, geometric information of these, uh, of these solids. And they are given here like volume, mass, center of gravity, moments of inertia and stuff like that. So that's the material domains, but I can also uh, show you the flow domain, uh, which which I going to cut through and and what you see here is now the the negative if you like with all the details where the flow can uh, for instance flow back over the secondary flow path and stuff like that and again this can be um, exported to TCFD and you can then run a complete uh, simulation of all the details you would have in a in a turbo machine. Okay, and saying that I'm I'm at the end of my presentation and I would like to hand over to Lubosch and Radek. Okay, Oliver, thank you very much. It was very impressive and it looks very simple and easy to how it's how, how to create a, from a scratch such a complex machine. So thank you for it. And uh, yeah, so I'll take back the the presentation. Yeah, so this was CF Turbo part, and that moves us to the Turbo Machinery Simulation part. And yeah, and please let me start with a little description of what is TCFD. So TCFD is a comprehensive high-tech CFD code, which is focused and unlimited. It's designed to be complete CFD workflow that covers all the engineering steps in graphical interface from the pre-processing over the simulation run to the very detailed post-processing of the results. It's independent on any other CFD software. And on the other hand, it's fully compatible with other software. And for this reason, it's, it, it can be easily integrated into an existing process chain in any organization. Um, the CFD is always focused on particular workflows, so by, by particular applications. So TCFD core business has, has always been turbo machinery simulations like pumps, uh, fans, uh, turbines, uh, compressors, uh, hydro turbines, uh, wind turbines, and many other kinds of rotating machinery, both radial and axial machines, both compressible and incompressible fluid flows. And later we have decided what had worked so well in turbo machinery, we, we have extended to external aero or even internal aero or even for example, to ship hydrodynamics. And uh, yeah, so we believe the CFD is unique CFD workflow because it's unlimited, which means our clients can keep the CFD forever and they can use it for unlimited number of users, jobs, or cores. And it means our clients can scale their CFD simulations in a really big way, and they can use their resources to the fullest. Uh, yeah, 
So TCFD is focused on particular applications and workflows. So for example, a fan engineer uses the fan inputs, fan names, units, and results, as you can see, I believe, later in this webinar. TCFD is automated for this reason. It's extremely effective. Uh, we have good technical support. TCFD includes uh, a lot of real tutorials, which are based on real projects we did in the past. And also it, they show the best practice settings that, that ensure the, the smooth start of, of people who start with CFD simulations or with the beginners. And yeah, TCFD is very progressive because it successfully merged the benefits of an open source, which means that it's perpetual for unlimited number of users, jobs, and cores. And it matched the benefits of open source with the benefits of commercial codes. That means it's professionally maintained. It has a graphical interface. It's robust. It's accurate. It's automated, well documented, well tested, and simply it's it's ready. It's ready for the industry. Um, uh, yeah, the user can simply put the data in, and TCFD does its job, writes down the results, and in the end, the user can just pick up the final report. And that's it. So TCFD can be used either as a black box or it can be used as a fully sophisticated CFD code where all the options are opened. So the beauty of TCFD is that it's the user who decides how, how deep to dive into CFD or not at all. So that's, I believe, the, the uniqueness of TCFD. And yeah, so here I would like to hand over the presentation to Radek, who will show you uh, how to how to how to really really work and give you right, right real experience with TCFD. So Radek, are you ready for your part of the webinar? Yes, yes, I am. So okay, so right now I'm switching. Uh, I'm handing over the presentation over to you. So can you? Uh, okay, I already claimed it, and maybe we should wait a few seconds. A couple, couple of seconds. Yeah. Okay. To be loaded. Okay, so. So it's before. There. I hope so. So before my screen will will be shown. So I will just quickly quickly introduce let's say outline of my of my part. So first in the first part first part I will present or introduce the input requ requirements. So I think now it's coming. Yeah, we can see it now. Yes. Okay. okay perfect. Thank you. Okay. So in the first part, I will introduce the the inputs. So the inputs requirements, uh, basically inputs requirements on on the on the geometry on STLs, which which are automatically generated and followed by by the CF Turbo export. So if you use CF Turbo as a as a kit tool or as a as a uh, as a design tool, so then you will immediately by one click, as as Oliver already shown us, that by one click you can generate the, the export to TCFD and then use it in TCFD. And then in my second part, I will I will show you I will show you some live example of this radial radial fan. So what is the what is the TCFD workflow? So we can split it into parts, two main parts. First one is the input, which is a little bit a part of a part of uh, of TCFD, so it's the input data. So usually you need to create your geometry in some kit software, then you then export the data into STL format, which is triangulated surface format, or using some external meshing tool and directly generate the the simulation ready mesh in, for example, MSH format, and then put it into the TCFD and simulate it in TCFD. So there are two main two main inputs, STLs or mesh, which is ready to simulate in MSH format. Then we need to prepare the simulation parameters, which can be directly directly set in the graphic user interface of TCFD, or you can prepare the part in the text file because it, it is just a file including simulation parameters. You need to be aware of garbage in, garbage out, of course. So if you put something wrong inside, then of course you will get the wrong results. So 
So what I would like to just mention that TCFD is not, not yet, a tool for get to STL data conversion. So the geometry must be ready apart from TCFD. And then the TCFD work, workflow is basically loading the data, loading the, the geometry, preparing the CFD simulation setup. So config, configure all the parameters like simulation type, for example, fans, compressors, pumps, and, and so on. Rotation speed of, of the impeller or propeller, setting boundary conditions, setting physics, setting how many processor you, you want to use and so on. Then the processing part, so basically really the simulation and all, all the stuff around the simulation. And at the end, it automat automatically rep um, generates a report, including all at one place, so all the, all the variables, all the properties, all the all the all the parameters of your of your of your design, like efficiency, torques, axial, axial forces, and so on. So this is the workflow of TCFD, and I would like to really emphasize the input requirements, which has to be satisfied. So basically, a lot of them uh, must be uh, must be followed both for STL geometry or external mesh. So first one is the flow path geometry. So we need to define just the fluid solid interface, so called the wet, wet surface area. Of course, you can provide the full solid, but the full solid must be must contain the, the flow, flow path area, the, the wet surface. So this must be provided, of course. Then the geometry must be as simple as possible because any detail, any any tiny hole which usually doesn't affect the overall parameters of the of the of your machine, of your geometry, should be neglected because it only makes trouble and doesn't 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 improve doesn't improve anything. So as simple as possible. Then you should think in the component component. So basically it follows the component thinking which Oliver sh sh has already shown us. So basically your geometry can be split into rotors and stators, into volutes, pipes, impellers, propellers, and all, all these parts. And then these parts are defined separately and then put together to, to, define, to define the rotating parts and the non-rotating parts properly. So the component thinking, then to think you need to provide physical boundaries. So you need to provide separate parts of each component. For example, you need to split your component into inlets, outlets, hubs, shrouds, blades. The blades can be additionally split into, for example, leading edges, trailing edges, pressure and suction, pressure and suction sides and so on. So this physical boundaries has to be defined. And of course, the water type property, because, because the meshing tool needs to have the water type property, or at least at least the holes must be really tiny to, to, to generate the computational mesh properly. So water type property and the triangulation refinement uh, yeah, which is a dis discretization of, for example, of a cat, cat of the continuous cat geometry. So the triangulation has to be as fine as possible because this is what you define your domain. So if you input something like this, then then you basically do you have something different from from the real design. Yeah. So the triangulation must be as fine as possible. So this input part can be altered by by CF Turbo because it generates exactly exactly the geometry which follows all these input requirements. So by one click, you can get the inputs into TCFD and then use it for for TCFD simulation. As well as CF Turbo also generate automatically the templated configuration file with all necessary and with all preset and necessary parameters for successful TCFD simulation. So what, what TCFD exports? So it is a geometry 
of the impeller, split it into meaningful parts like inlet, outlet, hub and shroud, and the blades split it into four parts, threading edges, leading edges, and uh, pressure and suction side. And the same for the volute, volute is again split into the inlet, outlet, and then the rest part of, of the volute, like the tongue area, uh, out, outlet diffuser, the body of the volute, and, and so on. And the last part, it generates configuration file. So it's a simple file, including the TCFD parameter, parameters, like what is the axis of rotation, what are the physical properties of the fluid, and so on. So everything is ready for the simulation. So I will go now for for a live example. So I will go for CF Turbo export. So I have this data here. So I will just to open it in TCFD. So this is the input geometries in STL format and the configuration file. So what I need is only to click on the configuration file and and the new the graphical user interface will appear. So it automatically loads the input geometry and then we can briefly present the setup of TCFD simulation. So this is our input geometry split it in two components, simpler and volute. So here are the menus uh, which is used for the TCFD setup, for the simulation setup. So I will I will go just quickly. In the simulation part, we we set a, the time management, so if steady state or, or transient simulation. So here we will simulate steady state, how many processors. For example, my computer here has 16 pro processors, so I can use all of them. Numerical order, first or second. We can go for second, for example. Convergent check is just checking for the convergence, if the convergence uh, or, or convergence conditions are satisfied, it stops the simulation before the maximum iteration are reached. Physics, we can set reference frames. Using In the reference frame, you, you basically define the rotation, the, the rotation of your, of, of the impeller. So by setting axis origin and the rotation speed, now the component section, which is pretty important. So here you basically define the, the mesh, the computational mesh based on the input geometry. So we have two components, impeller and volute. Impeller is rotating, component is static. And for each part of the geometry, we set basically the type of the boundary, which is really straightforward. Blade, there is a type blade or blade leading edge, blade pressure side. There are types like hub and shroud, inlets and outlet inter interface. So simple inlet is the physical inlet into the whole geometry and something inlet outlet interface is the connection between two, between two components. Then you need to set the, the refinement. So how, how fine the mesh will be at the given parts of the geometry. Maybe here I will I will use my presentation. So here are the meshing parameters. Basically, the the coarsest cell is defined as a background mesh size. So this is the coarsest cell in your computational mesh, and then you set the level of refinement. So how many times the mesh will be refined at each part of your geometry? So level zero, level one, level two, simply splitting of of the hexahedras. Uh, what I would like to mention here that it is really handy if you split your domain or for, for example your blades into meaningful parts for, for example leading edge, trailing edge and pressure suction side for usually if depending on the case of course but usually you need for, for highly curved and thin thin blades you need to you need to provide really um, really refined mesh at the leading edges and trailing edges because of high curvature. So we need to provide more cells to really follow the geometry. So for this purpose, if we set the level two, for example, here for the whole blade, we get something like this. So the, the leading edge is very coarse and this zigzag shape, which is not good for the simulation. 
So if we set the level four everywhere, so we have, let's say, nice, nice refinement at the, at the edges, but also at, at all the blades, which generate us much more higher cell amount of, in your mesh, which also makes the simulation much more longer and so on. And for example, the Y plus requ requirements are not so high. So we can then decide, okay, I would like to just refine the leading edge and trailing edge and I can keep a coarser level at the pressure side and suction side, and we save a lot of cells. Yeah? So if we export it in this way, we can we can really tune tune the meshing to have really nice meshing with the, with the less amount of cells compared compared to the to the export with the with the blade as a one STL for example. So this is really handy. So thanks to this, we can play with these numbers and set it to follow our needs. So this was just quick in introduction into, into the meshing part. Then the rest section are, for example, the speed line. So within the one simulation, you can define more points. So to reveal, for example, the, the full performance map with the different at the different conditions, usually the different flow rates, for example. So CF Turbo exports the, the, the best design point for which the design was designed. <laughs> a lot of design words. So for example, I can add, let's say five points to be simulated. Let's say with the maximum number of iteration, 1000. Then Turbulence model is here K-Mega SST, but then in the boundary conditions, so at the inlet, we set the volumetric flow rate and at the outlet, there is the fixed pressure. So we know that this value is from CF Turbo and this is the best, de best design point. So I will put it in, into the middle and I can, for example, simulate the points around, around, the, be on, around the design point by the, by the percentage, for example. So I, I can set something like this. And if I change, if I change the the items here, so this plus percent sign, which means that I will simulate the volumetric flow rate, which is increased by 20% compared to this value, and the, similar for the rest. So I would like to reveal the properties of this design around the design point. So I can use it in this way or using the absolute values of volumetric flow rate. It, does, it doesn't matter. The initial condition and some simulation controls for the solver and the post-processing in which I can set my favorite units, which will appear in the final report, uh, which parts will be used for evaluation of the efficiency. So now it is set for the full geometry, but I can also add efficiency probe we call it so basically from which part the efficiency will be will be evaluated and i can set for example just for the impeller so i will get rid of it so just i would like to see the efficiency of the for the for, for the whole geometry additionally i can preset some automa automatic evaluation evaluation features which is blade to blade views for example so i can generate for example three blade to blade views with with the visualization of for example relative velocity with its streamlines so i can just simply click here and this is span so it is basically it is a slice between the hub and shroud between the hub and shroud at the relative coordinates between hub and shroud so this is the it, it is the coordinate 10 10 percent of the of overall height close to the close to the hub this is just in the middle and this slice will be in the close next to the next to the shroud similarly i can set up the meridional average so for example i will two i will set two uh, evaluation one for total pressure and one for static pressure and that's all whenever i am done i can go for the simulation so if i denote the settings i go for TCFD manager then I can click apply. I have to click and apply, apply of course, then then define 
the name of the directory in which all the results will be stored. Then I can click write case and run all to run all the simulation, all the process by one click. So whenever I, I okay, I will not to do, I will, I'm not going to do that. So by run all, I will run everything which I have done before before the webinar started. So this is the progress of the simulation. So here we can see the residuals. Here we here we can see the light report, which can be generated anytime during the simulation. So including the updated values of my simulation up to now. Meanwhile, I can, for example, or anytime after the mesh is generated, I can visualize the mesh by clicking here and for, for example, to see the, the topology of the mesh at the volute, right? And at the end, the full report is automatically evaluated. Moreover, at the end of the simulation, you can, anytime you can open the results. Okay, okay, so I can go back. You can open the results by the show results or anytime later on, if you go to to my directory or to your directory with, with your simulation and by clicking on the case form, you will open the case with all the results and you can make some manual visualization. For example, here I have two blade to blade views, one with one with static pressure, con one with static pressure contours and one with total pressure contours. So it was my clock that my time is almost up. So I will quickly conclude. Yeah, so there is no limitation. You can you can do any any visualization as you want and and analyze your your geometry and and your simulation. And maybe the last part, what I would like to mention yeah, is some introduction to to the newest release, which is under testing, under heavy testing at the moment. So there will be, for example, new transient options, which allows to, which allows us to define any any time stepping constant constant time step, constant time stepping with uh, with uh, with uh, following the degrees of revolution of the wheel, which is really handy. You can then compare compare the results. For example, here is here is comparison of the steady state. Of this of this radial fan with the with the with the transient simulation you can see there in the in the report and yeah and many 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 other many other features will be will be introduced so i think my time is really up so i think yeah i am at the end so thank you for attention and it's time to go back to lubosch to conclude this webinar so lubosch can you can you take over the presentation back yes of course Radek. Okay. thank you very much for your part of the of the of the webinar so i'll take back the the, the presentation and yeah and we are nearly done yeah so this is now it's the q and a time so i would like i would like to ask all the audience if you have any question uh, just just ask the question we will we will answer uh, a few of them and uh, later we will answer all of them so feel free to ask your questions, and we'll be it will be our, our pleasure to to answer answer them. Uh, okay. So uh, does anybody see uh, a proper question who would like to answer? Uh, so yeah. So James is asking what post post processing tool did you use? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's it's part of you, right? So so maybe maybe you uh, maybe you noticed or it's pretty uh, it's pretty uh, known that 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 TCFD use TCFD use part of you for its uh, for its uh, uh, case setup, uh, case run, simulation run, and the, the, the detailed post processing. So yeah, it's part of you. Um, um, okay. So does anybody see a question to answer? 
So yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe the, 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 uh, we can answer this one. So, for example, uh, Kasse is asking how we can control the criteria of uh, quality meshing. So, Radek, would you would you answer a little bit what we can see in the report of every simulation? For example, yes, I can. Yes, stats? yeah, I can. I can. So, just if you can give yes. me the presentation. Yes. Yes. Okay, show my screen. Okay, maybe there will be again a delay, unfortunately. Okay, so, the, the delay again. Oh, okay, so okay. meanwhile I will I will find found I will find the report, and maybe maybe you can you can answer. Yeah, answer another the question. question. Uh, okay, <laughs> so I I have to say uh, so far I can't see many questions on cf turbo and, and and i can't see any uh, any question on the cfd either so may, maybe maybe it's i think maybe it's time to or radic radic will show okay 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 so, so, there, there, so okay. here is the report so i will open the report so it contains let's say almost all the all the parameters of the simulation including including the mesh mesh statistics so there are all the all the standard meshing parameters like non orthogonality skewness and so on and you can follow its values directly here yeah so for the component one for the component two all the parameters all the meshing parameters are are here yeah so everything is available for each simulation. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Radek. So, yeah. So this seems to be it. So the time has, the time is, yeah, the time is gone anyway. So I think it's time to to conclude. I'll switch uh, to the end of my presentation, which is this. Okay. So yeah, this is really it from us in this webinar today. So. Yeah, thank you for, for coming. Feel free to contact us. I'm, I'm sure you know how to do that. The questions uh, about CF Turbo are to be sent to CF Turbo. The questions about the CFD are to be sent to CFD support. So let us know how we can support you. We will gladly support you in your projects. It's our job and also uh, our pleasure. And yeah, this really seems to be it. So anything more to say, Oliver? Uh, the only thing I want to say is thank you for your time and I uh, hope you, you will be at our webinar next time again. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. And Radek? Yeah, I think everything was already mentioned. So thank you for watching us. Thank, thank you, Oliver, for joining this webinar. And I will also looking for the next webinar and I will also looking for the question from 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 the attendees of this of this, of this webinar so have a nice day and bye bye <laughs> all right then so we leave you with that so thank you for your attention we are looking forward to collaborating with you stay tuned and bye bye for now <laughs>